Hi everyone and welcome back. It's Vicky here with a new art journal layout. Today I'm working on my 8x8 disc bound journal and this is a journal that I made myself using the punch. You can see a video, I am going to link it here. This is actually 140 pounds uh, watercolor paper. I haven't prepared it with anything and I will be working on it to create my background using my Distress Oxide inks. So I'm going to use the good old technique where I'm smooshing a little bit of ink on my craft mat and then I'm going to apply some um, water. And then all I'm going to do is to just uh, apply the paper on top of my surface and pick up all that color. I'm not going to move the paper too much around since I don't want to create mud and I'm not going to cover up the whole background at once. I'm going to leave it as it is. You can also apply a little bit of water directly if you want to move the color more. And then I'm going to use my heat gun to make sure that this first layer is dry before I go ahead and apply more ink. Every time I'm using uh, new colors you will see the names of uh, the ink pads that I used on your screen. So now all I'm doing is just picking up uh, the color that I already have on my craft mat. I am uh, trying to uh, some kind of control where I want this color to go. So I'm trying to fill in all those empty spaces. Now I have cleaned up my mat, making sure that this layer is also dry and then I will move on and add new colors. Now I am adding a layer of spiced marmalade and again I am going to make sure that this layer is dry before I add the next color. Now my colors are quite light so I want to darken up this piece a little bit. And uh, I would normally video edit this and just show you the final piece, but I decided that maybe you want to see the whole process of me smooshing uh, the paper on different uh, colors. And uh, I just wanted to you to see that um, you can't really go wrong with that. You don't really need to think of the color theory. Just add color one on top of the other and build up your layers. Just remember to dry the layers in between. Now this is where I am going darker with my inks, so these are fired brick and uh, faded jeans. And I even added some violet in the mix and you will see how drastically these uh, colors are going to change the look of my layout. Now even if you don't like what you get, don't um, be afraid, just uh, go on and uh, spray with water and add even more layers until you are happy with what you have. So this is where I had enough with this technique and I decided to add a little bit of color directly with my blending tool in different areas. I'm not introducing new colors, I'm just working with the colors that I have already played with to create the background. The ink is transparent so although it adds more um, color into my page, it doesn't cover up all the layers that I have built up until now. Now I'm going to darken up the edges just because I always like to do that. I'm using my blending tool and I'm applying some uh, vintage photo all around and then I will add some uh, splashes using the same ink. So all I'm going to do is to just smooth a little bit on my craft mat and then I'm going to add a little bit of water and do the splashes with my brush. And I will repeat the same process of inking the edges with black suit this time. And as I'm adding black color, I'm not moving the blending tool as far as I did with the brown one. So I do end up having both those colors on my edges. And then I will go ahead and do the splashes with this black suit just like I did with the vintage photo. And those backgrounds that I create with this technique and Distress Oxide inks are really my favorite. I just love this chunky look and all those colors that they are uh, blending together. I think they look really magical. So now for my focal point I will use this stencil by Darkroom Door and these are the large butterflies. I like that they give you the inside, so the mask as well as the stencil. And for my layout today I'm going to use both the negative and the positive uh, pieces of this butterfly. So first of all I'm going to secure this stencil on top of my page and I didn't want to have uh, the um, whole butterfly at the center as you would normally do. Instead I want to have only half of the butterfly just to add more interest and something uh, unique on my page. Plus I don't want to completely cover up all those beautiful colors on my background.
Now I have uh, secured the stencil on my page with some tape and now I'm going to color inside the butterfly with black gesso and for that you can also use black acrylic paint. Now I'm trying to be as neat as possible here so I will end up with a nice uh, uh, outline of my butterfly. I don't load up my brush with too much gesso every time so that um, the paint is not going to seep underneath the stencil. But again this is just an art journal. If uh, something goes wrong it's not the end of the world. And if you take a closer look you will see that uh, the edges aren't exactly perfect but that's not a problem. I will show you how you can fix that later on. And now I'm going to use the actual butterfly on top and I'm going to use some markers. These are acrylic markers that I have to add all the details on my butterfly. Now I do have the dilutions ones that have very fine tip and I have a bunch of others that um, like my Posca ones. These are all um, water based acrylic paints with different nibs and uh, they are all from my collection. And I promise I will make a video with all my acrylic uh, markers so you can see the different brands, the different nibs and all the options that you have. So I have also the Liquitex ones with chisel tips. I got those with chisel tips. So I was trying to decide with which uh, brand I'm going to play today and I decided to go with my Pebio markers. They actually have two different styles. The For Artists one, this is the one, and the Deco marker. I will be using uh, markers from the Deco marker line today. The For Artists one actually is oil based and it's quite shiny, while the um, Deco marker is uh, actually acrylic paint and it is water based. So I will be using those today. Now I would normally work with my big brush markers by Faber Castell to add shading, but those markers have Indian ink and that means that they are transparent and that's why I love those for adding my shading. However, now I want to cover up black areas, which means that I need to work with uh, something that is quite opaque and you can see how these uh, markers work. They are great. They are actually acrylic paint in uh, a marker form and uh, you can see that uh, I can uh, move them with my finger. I can blend them easily and when they dry they are going to be permanent. As always you will find uh, links to all the products that I'm using today as well as uh, links to the deco markers that I'm playing with. You will see that these deco markers come in a wide range of colors and you also have the option to pick different sizes of nibs. The ones that I'm working with now are the 1.2 size and I think it's a great size for our journaling. But you will see in the video that I will make with uh, showing you all the um, acrylic markers that I have, I try to get different uh, nib sizes when I buy different brands and that's just because I want to try <laughs> pretty much everything. So anyway, I am uh, continue coloring my butterfly and I'm using uh, red, orange and yellow here and you can see how vibrant these colors are. I'm just amazed of how that uh, uh, yellow writes on top of black. And you can see how vibrant that is. Now I'm going to remove the stencil and you can see the beautiful butterfly. I'm trying to make sure that all the paint there is dry now before I go ahead and uh, add some white details. For the white details again I will be using the same deco marker in white and you will see how lovely this writes as well. And uh, I'm just going to add some dots as well as do the outline of my butterfly. Now notice that when I write with this marker on top of black gesso then it is really vibrant but when I am trying to do the outline since I am writing on top of Distress Oxide inks, Distress Oxide inks actually react with this marker so it, it is writing on top of them but it looks more dull. But that's not a problem, you can leave the first layer to dry and then you can go over it one more time and it's going to look nice and vibrant. And just because I cannot leave this white marker off my hands, I'm going to add more details outlining the inside of my butterfly. Now I'm going to add some stamping on my background. For that I'm using a stamp by Tim Holtz and I'm using a Coffee Archival Ink. I'm going to stamp in different areas, just adding a little bit of interest at the background. I'm not going for the perfect impression. 
And I'm also switching uh, stamps so I don't have the same uh, repetitive design on my background again and again. And of course it's time for my white splashes. This is white gesso that I have diluted with water. I'm also covering the butterfly because at this stage I didn't want the butterfly to have white splashes. But you will see at the end that I'm going to change my mind. Now I always like to add white splashes when I have white um, details on my focal point because I think that little details like this really bring everything together. And this is where I decided to add the white splashes on top of my butterfly, because why not? For my quote, I decided to go with these Tim Holtz uh, quote chips. These are quite thick. I'm using uh, white glue at the back to stick that on top of my butterfly, and it says be authentic. As a final touch, I'm going to do some stenciling. I'm using black embossing paste and I'm going through this stencil that has a, a lovely script on top. And my layout is ready. I'm going to put it back to my disc bound journal and I'm going to bring in the 6x6 one so you can see the difference in size. And that was the layout for today. I hope you had fun and got inspired to play with your stencils and your Distress Oxide inks. Here are some close-up photos of today's project. If you haven't subscribed to my channel already, make sure to do so because this is the way to tell me that you like my videos and you want to see more. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you next time.